Welcome to the Kuya Dev Tidbits Podcast, where we explore the ins and outs of building a successful career in the tech industry. My name is Rem, your Kuya Dev, and I'm excited to have you join me for this episode. Whether you're just starting out, looking to shift careers into tech, or hoping to grow more as a tech professional, this podcast is for you. Thank you for tuning in, and together, let's enjoy the episode. Episode 6. So we're halfway through the season now. And time flies so fast. Like, this at the time of this recording, it's already the end of February. So, yeah, that's so fast. Um, for this episode, I want to, to change things up. Because I've, in the previous, previous uh, episodes, I've been focusing on the less technical aspects of software engineering. So, I want to... No, just for this episode, I want to dive a bit into some technical aspects, or more technical aspects of software engineering. And this is most specifically about optimization. So when we talk about optimization, or we refer to optimization, the usual thinking is it's about making an application faster and more efficient. But for me, and for some others, when I speak about optimization, it's less about that. Because optimizing for speed and efficiency for real-world projects, at least uh, on my domain, web development, and other similar domains, it's very impractical. I mentioned this in the previous episode that optimization is often or is rarely done by common engineers, you know, common web developers, common software engineers. Because most of the time, libraries that we use are already optimized or continually being optimized by project maintainers. So, as a common quotes the common software engineer we often just consume those packages which has, which are often already optimized of course there are rare instances that you would need to do custom optimizations but for this episode i will not discuss optimization for speed's sake and for efficiency's sake. I will talk about what I think would be the default thing that software engineers should be optimizing for. And what do I refer here? I refer to optimizing for change. So ito, hindi matalas ituro to, or very rarely ituro to sa academe and even in bootcamps. Kasi ang, ang turo sa academe and in bootcamps is build ka lang or you build an application from the ground up with you, often you or a few other people working on it. But often, you start from zero. But in the real world, more than half of the work that you'll be doing is building on top of, of an already existing system. If you're in web development, there's already a website or a web app. Na anja na. Other people have already worked on it. So, if you're a new hire, often you would go there, join a team, join a company, and you would study the code base that other people have already worked on. And if the code base is not 
optimized for change. Someone, especially a junior, would have a hard time adding features, debugging, refactoring the code base. May hirap ka mag-introduce ng change. And this is again, this is not this is one of the things that are not thought or not taught on uh, in the academy and the in boot camps. Na software is a living organism. It's bound to change. And maraming gagalaw diyan. Okay. Sige. There are times na a software developer will work alone. But I argue na in reality, kahit mag-isa ka lang dyan, even if you're just the sole developer, you're actually working on a team of infinite developers. How did that happen? Is that even possible? Infinite developers, I'm just working alone? You gotta be insane, right? Kuya Dev, you're... <laughs> you're insane. Hear me out. So, if you're working alone, who do I think would be your teammates? The first developer that will be working on your, on your project would be your today self. Sabi natin, pangalan natin, pangalan natin yung, yung developer as Rem. Yeah? So, today Rem, or today Kuya Dev. The second developer that will be working on your uh, software project would be tomorrow kuya dev the third developer the second day kuya dev or the third day the day after kuya dev na kuya dev two days after today and another developer that will be working on your on your project would be the kuya dev a week after and a month after three months after a year after so in terms of time, kung titing ilalatag mula sa timeline niyan, and time is continuous, that's effectively an infinite number of developers. Kuya Dev, di ko pa rin gets. I, I, I'm not following you. I know. Okay. So based from experience, sabihin na lang natin ganito ha. Magibigay na lang ako ng specific instance. So, based from experience, I worked on a project before and they made me, you know, uh, I had a task to create a custom web form in React. And it's for sort of a form builder that the API would provide a configuration of a set of um, field a, pair, a set of pair of field and a value for that field. And each field would could be any kind of field, like a text field, password field, pass, password field drop down, upload, depending on what the API would provide. So there are several types of fields. So the front end, would need to take that configuration from a the API and render the whole form, you know, the whole web form, to render each field according to the configuration. Yeah. If it's a text field, of course, it would have a label in that text field and the, the uh, whatever. Um, styles that would entail and do that for each type of field so beforehand the software would not or the front end would not know what kind of form it would render it would just, it would just take the configuration muna and then render it accordingly that's very custom so when I was building that I decided to be clever I used patterns in react na i thought na ooh this would be a great time to do to do this and i was coding 
just to make myself feel good. Na, oh, ang clever ng code ko. Ang ganda nitong code ko. Without thinking na in the future, this will change. So what happened is, well, I was satisfied. Ang ganda nung kinalabasan. But six months after, requirements changed. I forgot what happened. I, I, I forgot what changed in the requirements. But I had to tweak the code for the web forms to accommodate for that change. And when I got back to that code base, to that particular web form code, sobrang minura ko yung sarili ko. Sabihin na natin, let's just uh, think na or assume na this, this happened in July. I, I wrote the code in July. Six months after, mga January, February. January, Feb- the, the, the January Kuya Dev, minumura niya si July Kuya Dev. Because why did you do that? In effect, although iisang tao lang yun, in effect, it was two developers. The July me, and the January me. Na, no? what was July Kuya Dev thinking during this time? So yung needs ni January Kuya Dev, hindi ma- hindi ma- meet dun code ni July Kuya Dev. Pero at least, I had only myself to blame. But what if you're working with a, with, in a huge organization? It's the, that problem is going to multiply by many times. The problem will be, you know, siguro exponential, diba? Will grow exponentially. The more developers you have working on a similar code, or, or, or on the same code base. So if a, a certain piece of code is not optimized for change, weeks, months, years after, it will be very, very resistant to change. At hindi, wala, wala magsasabi sa inyo, or bihira sasabihin sa akadim to. Akadim and bootcamps. That software nga is a living organism. It's bound to change. So, we as software developers, as software engineers, we have a responsibility to optimize for change. So every time na magsusulat tayo ng any line of code, lagi natin iisipin na this code will change in the future. And probably, ako rin yung gagawa nun. Ako rin yung magbabago. So ngayon pa lang, hanapan ko na ng paraan, no? find a way for this piece of code that I'm writing to be adaptable to change. That's not easy to do. I'm not saying that's easy. It's very hard to do. And it comes with experience. What types of patterns or what types of programming practices can we implement in this particular instance so that months after I've written this code, I can change it easily? Kung hindi kayo naniniwala na nagbabago ang code, tumingin lang kayo sa mga open source projects you would see yung mga ano, may mga com- commits doon, may mga changes doon na parang ginawa nila gantong way. You know? they, they made it in such, a, in such a particular way. Months after, they will backtrack, you know? revert everything, then go back again. That happens. And it happens often. Because if you think about it, If a business is tech heavy, it's um, particularly uh, reliant on tech, you know, some piece of software. Actually, it's the opposite. Uh, let me retract. Software is reliant on business. It will not exist pagka wala siyang use case. It might be yun nga, business or any entity or even personal. 
it will it will not exist pagka wala siyang gamit. Pag walang gumagamit niyan, walang silbi yung yung software na yan. Pero yun nga, most software that's already out there, you know, and massive, massively adopted. May use case sila. And usually may business case sila. And what you need to know about business, heavily motivated by 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 profits of course. And whatever, baka may North Star sila sinusundan. So management will will have decisions that will impact the business. And business requirements will change. Yung mga simple lang nga lang na parang uy yung color ng button natin ganito, some some shade of blue. But according to our to our user research, mas effective pagka lighter blue. And this has happened to me. We had to change the, the shade of that particular color. Sabi natin blue. And we were, when we were about to change it, sobrang hirap. That's, it's absurd. It was absurd. Na, bakit ganun? Ito lang yung papalitan namin. Gagawin lang namin lighter yung blue. Bakit? Napakahirap. Medyo extreme yung, yung case na yun, but it does happen. It has happened. Na, we had to refactor a lot of things para lang mangyari yun. So, don't think na pagka nagsulat ka ngayon ng code, yan na yun. 100% of the time, sabi natin, ano, oh, mahilig ako magbigay ng mga, ano, di ba, percentages sa uh, <laughs> mga recent uh, episodes ko. But, uh, just to, ano lang, na, give some sort of, uh, imag- give you something to imagine. No? Para lang ma- picture nyo sa utak nyo. So, yung natin 80 to 90 percent. That, that code has 80 to 90 percent chances of being changed in the future. It can actually be deleted then, di ba? Depende. Depende sa magiging requirements in the future. So, yun pa. Ito pa yung hindi ko rin magets eh. Dun sa iba. Parang in love na in love sila sa code na sinulat nila. Don't get attached to, the, to, to your code. Kasi it's bound to change. It might be the right piece of code now, but a couple of weeks from now, it, it might not be the right solution na. Kasi nag-iba na yung requirements. So, huwag kayong, ano, huwag kayong, huwag kayong ma-attach sa code nyo. Okay lang yan. Okay lang na, uy, hindi na to, hindi, ba't, ba't ganito ginawa mo? Ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Eh, kasi nung panahon yun, ganito eh. Di ba? It was right for this situation. Eh. Ngayon, nag- nag- nagbago yung situation. The situation has changed. Of course, the code has to change. Kaya, ako rin, eh, nagbago yung outlook ko about bugs. Because bugs, there, there are uh, different kinds of bugs. A huge portion of these bugs is because requirements change. Situations change. No? So don't be... Don't be disheartened pagka biglang, uy, there's a regression. No? Nagkaroon na regression because something changed. And again, software is meant to change. Code is meant to change. And that's the reason why Ren, uh, again, I'm going tangent here, but that's the reason why I don't think AI will replace software engineers. No? Unless sobrang galing ng AI na it could predict the future. How, how the business will change in the future if it can predict that. Maybe. No? Maybe it could have a chance at replacing software engineers. Pero people are very unpredictable. I don't think any machine could ever predict how people will behave, how the market, which is very dependent on people, would behave. And if people's behavior changes, software will change. So, yeah. Um, siguro, to, in conclusion, 
No. Software will change. This isn't being thought. Lagi mali ah. This isn't, this isn't being thought. Not thought. Thought. In the academe. Eh, ito. Sabihin ko na lang kung bakit. Bakit hindi siya tinuturo sa academe. Because in the academe, most software, or all, actually all, I will go ahead and say all. No? Sobrang rare kasi na mangyari. All software written in the academe no? by, by students as part of their projects, as part of their assignments, are one-off projects, or one-off software. Isusulat mo siya for the purpose of submitting as part of the requirements of the course, of the subject. Pero it's very rare that you would maintain it after you've submitted it. No? Bihira yun. Unless, actually, wala akong nabalitaan na, ano eh, meron siguro na software project in school, no? built in the academe, uh, by uh, uh, a project by a student, na naging software na ginamit ng marami. Bihira yon. It happens, but sobrang bihira. Kahit siguro yung mga nakikinig sa aming estudyante ngayon, di ba? Pag sinula ay pagka nagsabit ka ng assignment mo or project mo for that subject, pagkasabit na pagkasabit mo, kakalimutan mo na yon. So, there's no need for maintainability, di ba? So, you don't need to optimize for change. Kasi, pagkasabit mo, hindi mo na babaguhin yon, yun na yon, kakalimutan mo na yon. Pwede mo nang i-delete sa computer mo yun, actually. But that's the nature. In academe and bootcamps. But in industry, that's opposite. Software will live for as long as business business has use for it. So yeah, um, thank you and uh, I'll see you next episode. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Kuya Dev Tidbits Podcast. I hope it will be helpful to you in your tech career journey. Remember, building a successful career in tech takes time and dedication. But with the right mindset and resources, anything is possible. If you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends and colleagues. And if you have comments, suggestions, or any questions or topics you'd like to hear more about, feel free to email me at rem at kuya.dev. I'd also love to hear your own stories and experiences. So don't be shy, reach out and share them with me. I'm always here to support you in your tech journey. Do also join our community, Tech Career Shifter Philippines at www.techcareershifter.com. Until next time, keep learning, growing, and chasing your dreams. Thank you again for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode.